draw us closer. Our ultimate desire is a closer walk with the Lord, even as we log in on a daily basis to this platform. I know that has been my experience, that as I have spent time here, indeed, I have felt the Lord move in my life and in my situations. And I know it is the same for you. And so I welcome you to another powerful week, another power packed week where we are truly going to be sitting at the feet of Jesus. Our speaker this week is um, Pastor James Bolo, who was born in Monrovia in Liberia, which is in West Africa. He is one of nine children and grew up both in West Africa and the United States. Much of his earlier education took place in Liberia, and then he continued his education in the U.S., where he, in 2003, earned a bachelor's degree in religion with a minor in digital multimedia from Andrews University. Our speaker's bio is extremely impressive, and over the course of this week, I will be sharing interesting insights about him through um, as, as we engage with him. What jumped out at me is the fact that he has received numerous awards for his outstanding work in the area of church growth and evangelism in the Seventh-day Adventist church. And I think that is a, a, an area of passion for him. So at this time, I'd like to invite our speaker to share with us the message that he has for us today. Thank you very much. Let us be blessed as we sit at Jesus' feet. Let me take this time first to apologize for Dr. Ebola. He won't be on video just for today, just for today. Thank you, Dr. Bola. This is your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. I want to thank you all, the coordinator. I'm so sorry that I couldn't do video today. I had a previous um, uh, convocation service that went a little later. And so I'm unable to do videos. So you all forgive me. Those that are watching, going to be listening on Facebook tonight uh, and this morning. I know you should be watching or uh, uh, watching, and you can't just listen, please. I'm 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 very sorry for today. And and I want to say thank you all for considering me to come and speak on behalf of the King. Um, I'm 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 talking. I hope you all can get me. Uh, one of the things I'm going to ask you all to do, the host and all of that, I, I, I love to get responses when I preach. So I'm going to ask you for some reason if you can unmute some people because I want to hear some amen, some responses, so I know I'm not talking to myself as we go along, uh, along, along this platform. I know we got other people viewing all of that, but help the preacher along the way. I want to thank those that have gone before me. I was on um, uh, last week, and I got some powerful messages from our key speaker, she did an amazing job. Uh, um, weeks before that, I got some messages. So I've been on and just listening. My senior pastors came before me, Dr. Yangsin, my mentor, one of my mentors, and, 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 Dr., and, and Dr. Manny, my senior pastor, uh, a mentor in me also. So I want to thank God. I'm the youngest of all of them, and I'm here today. I know my time is short. So um, go with me, um, if you will. To, to Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 12. Tonight, this morning, I, I, my intent, my, my plan was that I was going to sing for you and I was going to preach. But since I can't do all of that, I'm just going to preach today and maybe tomorrow. I, I wanted to do something in your own native language in Swahili. I, I said to myself, but let me find a song to do um, um, for them. But I can't do it today, but I promise by God's grace, we will try that tomorrow. But turn with me to Acts chapter 12, verse 1. I'm going to read from there. I, I bring a greeting so I'm on behalf of my family. It says, now about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unliving bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four contonium, contoniums of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. The Bible says in verse 5, 
uh, in verse 5 says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord came up upon him, and the light shone in the prison, and, the, and smote Peter onto the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chain fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sander. And, and so he did. And said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But thought he saw a vision. Verse 10. When they passed the first and the second wall, they came onto the iron gate and that leadeth onto the city, which opened to them on its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and, and forward the, the angel departed from him. Verse 11. And when Peter was come to him to himself, he said, Now I know of surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the people of the Jews. For the next few moments, uh, the next 15 minutes, the next 15 minutes, I want to speak to you on the theme, uh, um, uh, uh, the expectation, prayer and expectation. I know our theme is intense prayer or emergency prayer. I want to show us what prayer can do when we make such a prayer. So pray with me. Father, bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. The church, Jesus has left. A new religion has started called Christianity. The Jewish religion was there. But this new religion seems to have been gaining steam. And they came crashing with the old religion, which was Judaism. And this group that claimed to be Sabbath worshipers, uh, 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 Sabbath keepers, and the new group that came that were Sabbath keepers, but, but, but were, were following Christ. They began to preach that Jesus came, God became man, God came in a tenement of him and flesh. They began to preach that Jesus resurrected, Jesus is God. They began to preach all of these things. And as they were preaching the good news, the good news of Jesus, the Bible says that Christianity began to flourish. Uh, uh, thousands of people began to join the church. And because this was happening, Judaism began to dwindle, and so there became a conflict. So soon, uh, the, the, the leaders got together, went to Herod, and said to him that if he could do something about this new religion, Herod, up to this time, had been there doing the best he could because he was just a bad governor. But now, he has been given some well, I would say power in the sense from the Jewish leader themselves. And so the Bible says, Herod stretched his hand. In other words, until then, Herod's hands were tied. But, but, but because the name of Christ now was being circulated, because they begin to say that Jesus had power over the grave, because they begin to say that Jesus was God, they begin to say that Jesus was coming back. They begin to say that Jesus could set the captive free. They begin to say that Jesus could lift heavy burdens because they were saying all of these things about this Jesus. Christianity became a threat. And so they called James, the brother of John, and, 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 and crucify him 
and beheaded him. And during those days, if you were beheaded, it meant that you pretty much was a, 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 a heretic. And so James is beheaded. And the expectation now is that because James is beheaded, and the Bible says that Herod saw that it pleased the people. James has been beheaded. So what he did, since James is beheaded, he caught Peter. He said, you know why? Peter's going to be next. Since he claimed to be the leader of the church, he's going to be next. So we're going to get Peter. And the Bible says now they, he got Peter. But, but when he got Peter, he got 16 soldiers to protect Peter, to guide Peter. To make sure that Peter will not escape prison. And the Bible says that Peter was put down in the dungeon of prison, in the inner part of prison. Not just that, but but they had two soldiers to tie Peter up. And the reason they did that was because they wanted to make sure that Peter would go nowhere. If you think that you're going to go anywhere, you will have to passed by the two soldiers first that are chained to you. You will have to get their permission to go anywhere. Peter has been stripped of everything. And you know, the Bible says in verse 4, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison dungeon, delivered him between four quaternium of soldiers to keep him intending that after the Passover, I know they got Easter here, but after the Passover, to bring him and kill him. So they had an expectation that after everything else, that Peter will be crucified. The Bible says in verse 5, the Bible says in verse 5, look at verse 5 with me, wherever you are in your Bible this morning, the Bible says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but the next line says, but prayer. Amen. Today, friends of mine, this morning, I want to say to you that what makes the difference in the lives of Christians is not so much so as so all we know is the connection we have with God. Do we trust God enough? Do we mm. believe God enough that we can call him in the midst of our crisis? Do we trust God enough to say that the Lord, my rock, in him I hide, that he is still the shelter in the time of storm? Do we trust Amen. God enough that it doesn't matter what the conflict is, it doesn't matter what is hanging over our head, that we can say, surely he shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence? Do we trust Amen. God enough? To say that he can give his angels charge over us. That it does not matter what happens. That he will, they will keep us in their way. Do we trust God enough? The mm. Bible says while Peter is in prison. I, I love this because it just amazes me. The Bible says while Peter was in prison. The Bible says but prayer. That word but says that everything else that had been said before will be nullified by the word but prayer. Hey. Uh, 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 it says that it does not matter what had happened before. James had been beheaded, but prayer is offered for Peter. The church is in crisis, but prayer is being offered by the believers. The yes, church sir. does not know what's going to happen, but prayer has been offered. No job but prayer has been made. Child sick, but prayer has been offered. Someone losing their mind, but prayer has been offered. Prayer is the weapon that we can use. That is that the greatest weapon we have to use against the enemy. In fact, Mrs. White said in her writing that prayer, in, in, in summarizing it, that prayer unlocks the storehouse of heaven. Mm. Prayer is the key. And you know the good news is that, friends, it's not how long the prayer is. It's how intense the prayer is. 
is now how fancy the prayer is or how eloquent the prayer is. The question is, is the prayer from your heart? Yes, sir. Does the prayer express genuinity? Is the prayer, does the prayer come from your heart where God sees it and heaven connects to that prayer? The Bible says, but prayer was being made. Now, I want to say this to you. Peter is in prison. Notice what the Bible says. He is in the in the dungeon of prison. But notice, notice what also happened. The Bible says that the soldiers, two soldiers, have been chained to Peter. Mm. You know, friends of mine, I want to say this to us. Sometimes God will have to allow us to even be in chain with our enemies. Sometimes God will allow us to sit in the very presence with our enemies. Sometimes God will allow us to go in the very room of our enemies. Sometimes God will allow us to find ourselves at the pendulum of the hands of our enemies. But you see, what makes the difference is not that God did not see it. David said, it's in the presence of our enemies that God will prepare a table. Hey. And God does not want to bless you in the absence of your enemies. No. He don't want to bless you. He want to bless you in the presence of your enemy. He want to bless us in the presence of our enemies. And the reason God wants to do that is that God wants us to understand that he have a different expectation for our lives. Mm. Peter went to sleep. Think about it. Yeah. You know your life is going to be, your head will be chopped off. You know that you're in prison, you're not coming out. Maybe that night Peter sang burdens and lifted a cavalry. Yes, sir. Maybe that night he sang days are filled with sorrow and chaos and lunatic and dream. Maybe that night he sang, All the wind, my Savior, led me. What can I ask you? Maybe that night he sang, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There is a precious fountain. Maybe mm. that night in prison dungeon, maybe that night he sang nearer to be my God. Maybe that night he sang amazing grace. Who knows, maybe that night he said, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to thee, I freely give. Or maybe he sang, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. The Bible says, but prayer was made. Now, friends of mine, when we pray, God moves. Are you there with me? Yes, sir. My prayer is so powerful. When we pray, God moves. Do I have a witness in the house? If you can testify tonight or this morning, some of you can say, you can declare that prayer has kept you. If you can testify right now, some of, you, some of us can declare that there were times that the doctor walked in the room and said we would not make it, but you are still here. If you can testify today, some of you can declare that there were times you had no jobs and no money, but God still provided for you. If you can testify like me, you can say that you've been down, but the Lord, God still has been there with you. You can declare that the same God of the valley is the same God on the mountain. Hey. Amen. The Bible says this. The Bible says something amazing. The Bible says the believers were praying. And when they were praying, God did something amazing. I believe. Now listen to me now. Every time I read the angel of the Lord, I believe it's Christ himself. So this is what I believe. I believe that Christ himself showed up. I believe that. You see, there are some missions that God does not entrust. With, with, with angels, there are some mission that God himself come down to give an answer. If you ask the three Hebrew boys in the fire and furnace, God himself came.
him. Are you there with me? And yes, I sir. believe this one, Christ himself came, woke Peter up. He came so quickly. He came, went down to prison dungeon. The soldiers fell asleep as dead men. He went to prison dungeon, woke Peter up. Now look at what's happening. Peter is not even worried. Peter went to sleep because he trusted God. Peter went to sleep because he believed that God was able. Are you there with me? So he went to sleep. Now, 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 now listen to this. When you trust God, when you believe God, you don't need to go to sleep, go to bed and worry and tossing and turning and not uh, worry after what's going to happen next. I know a God that neither slumber nor sleep. Hmm. And the Bible says, as the Bible says, the angel, oh, I would say Christ told himself, oh, Peter, get up, wear your clothes, take your sandals. Now it's time to go. Now I'm going to tell you how I knew this is God, because I believe it. The one that had chains on Peter's head, their chains have fallen off. God will deliver us in the presence of our enemies. Are you there with me? The chains have fallen mm -hmm. off, and Peter now realized, the, oh, 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 oh. At uh, first, Peter thought it was just a dream. And as they're going, the Bible says they passed the first gate. And now, now listen to this now. As they are approaching the second gate, and nothing, no one is ahead of them, but the gates are opening by themselves. Are you there with me? Lift up your hands, O oh, ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting door, because the King of glory is coming in. Are you there with me? Uh, Christ Amen. Is, and leading Peter out, and the angels, escorting the angels that are not seen by visible eyes, are opening the gate for the master as they get out. And the father that made it, Peter realized that this is not a dream. And I'm coming home now. Yes, sir. Come on. Peter realized that this is not a dream. Have you ever been there? God answered your prayer so quickly that you thought it was a dream. And so Peter said these words. He said, surely I know that the angel of the Lord delivered me. He said, from the hand of, Her of Herod and from the expectation of the Jews. I want us to know the plan that God has for us. The expectation mm. that God has for us is that we will prosper and be in good health. The expectation that God has for us is that our end will be glorious. The expectation that God has for us when we pray is that he will give a breakthrough. Do I have a witness in the house tonight? Amen. Good morning. As I close, as I close, I got one more minute now. As I close, I want us to understand that we can trust God. And when we pray, prayer can change the expectation of the enemy. Mm. Prayer can change the expectation of those that want to seek our downfall. Prayer can change the expectation of our tormentors. But not just that. Prayer can usher us into the very throne room of God, in the mm. presence of God. And what happens is that God is always ready and willing to give a yes to your, to your prayer. May God bless us this morning as we go out into whatever we do that we can know today. That does not matter the expectation, does not matter what the doctor, what the nurse said, does not matter what the bank said, does not matter what the, jo the job, the loan officer said, what the bank said, that prayer can change all of the expectation to a positive expectation from God. May God bless us this morning. Bow your heads with me. Father, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for using us another morning for your glory. May your name be elified, and may your name be lifted up. Bless your people around the world, in South Africa, in Cairn, wherever they are today, God, in the U.S., that are listening tonight, wherever they are, may they understand that when we pray, it moves 
the yes, heart of God. And he answered mm. our prayers. Bless Amen. us now. In Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus' name. Wherever you are, put your hands together for God and give my hand of praise. Wherever you are, in Jesus' name. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Amen.